Previously on Jimmy Kimmel Live. From Hollywood, it's Jimmy Kimmel Live. Tonight, James Corden, Richard Madden, and music from They Might Be Giants with Cleeto and the Cleetons. And now, Jimmy Kimmel. tell you it's all for me it's always a fun start to the weekend when uh, I'm in the car with five six-year-olds on the way home from a long birthday party day at Universal Studios suddenly everybody you know starts texting did you see what Trump said about you all at once and then the kids start asking what did Donald Trump say about you well kids what the former president of the United States said about me and Stephen Colbert and all the late-night hosts I guess is this these losers are dying they are bad for our country <laughs> which is in serious decline. Nobody wants to watch this negativity anymore. There's nothing funny about them. They're highly overpaid, easily replaceable fools. <laughs> and yet, unlike you, we still have our jobs. So it's... <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> Listen, to... Listen to Vladimir Gluten talking about negativity. Uh... He is out of his mind right now. I know he's been crazy for a long time, maybe even forever, but it's ratcheting up, I'm telling you. He was on this podcast. This is, it's called Full Send. It's these young guys who uh, goof around. Their last guest before Trump was on was a porn star. So, and the week before that, it was Don Jr. We've never as a country been in the danger that we're in right now. Uh, you have other countries, and in particular Russia, but other countries talking uh, the N-word, which is the nuclear word in this case. And uh, you can't do, you can't use that term. You can't use... Because there's uh, two N-words, right? There are two N-words, right? There's which one's worse? Uh, they're both real bad. Yeah. This is why they never let him on Sesame Street. <laughs> why he's constantly bringing up the N-word now when talking about nuclear war, I don't know. I think it's a mystery to every... I, maybe even him included. But this is his bigly thing now. Your real global warming would be nuclear global warming. That's, that's a warming that will take seconds. And that's a warming that will melt granite. You know what granite is? It's a very powerful, very hard stone. If you take a look at Hiroshima, or Hiroshima, as a lot of people call it. That's right, it's trying to be fair. Somebody's been using those Rosetta stone cassettes. <laughs> Eric got them for Christmas. This is quite a meeting of the minds. The host asked Trump to weigh in with one word assessments on, on some uh, notable individuals. And like any good president, he did. Elon Musk, one word. Uh, one word, smart. Joe Biden. Dumb, no. <laughs> Kim Jong-un. Uh, interesting, <laughs> very interesting. O.J. Simpson, which we had on this podcast, Well, I knew O.J. very well. I knew him very well. Um, I better not get into it. <laughs> I knew O.J. so well. It Cheater was... on the golf course? No, I don't think he cheats. But I'd say golf. I mean, he loves playing golf. I just say golf because I want to be very nice. You know, it was, that was a terrible situation. Yeah, it was. It was a... <laughs> that one he handles delicately. The one question he thinks twice about answering in his whole life, Kim Jong-un, no problem. O.J., all I'll say is he loves golf, okay? <laughs> Trump is revving the engines. He made a remote appearance for a crowd of evangelicals in Des Moines, Iowa over the weekend. MAGA Teresa sent in a video message to the crowd at the Faith and Freedom Coalition. And man, oh man, does this guy know how to connect with a religious audience. As the most pro-life president in American history, I will continue to stand strong against the extreme late-term abortionists in the Democrat Party who believe in abortion on demand in the ninth month of pregnancy and even executing babies after birth. They actually talk beyond birth, after birth, executing the baby. <laughs> what? <laughs> executing babies after birth? Who is doing this? And how? Did they strap the baby into an electric high chair? How does it work? 
What kind of nonsense is coming out of this lunatic's mouth? And the crowd goes along with it, I guess. I, don't, I feel like these people would be okay with abortion if they let the doctors use AR-15s. <laughs> Mike Pence also appeared before the Faith and Freedom Fight crew. He was there in person. Trump and Pence have been appearing separately at all the same events lately. They're like a divorced couple showing up at the kids' soccer games. And Lord <laughs> Almighty, when you talk about wow in a crowd, until you've seen Mike Pence in front of a group of evangelicals, well, you haven't seen Mike Pence. In four short years, we rebuilt our military. We secured our border. We revived our economy. We unleashed That's American one, energy. But most important three. of all... Check, check, testing one, two, three. That was for emphasis. You know, his written material is strong, but when he goes off the cuff like that, look out. I mean, that's when mother takes her bonnet right off. Oh, I did want to mention, you know, so you know, I don't know if you know, with Twitter, it erased all the blue check marks for anyone who refused to pay $8 a month. Well, over the weekend, a lot of people with more than a million followers had their check marks restored, including me, which is annoying because I don't want anyone to think I'm giving money to Elon Musk, which I am not. Somehow this genius managed to change what was a status symbol, that blue check mark, into the internet equivalent of a cold sore on your lip. <laughs> he gave Twitter herpes. And because of that, a lot of people who had their check marks restored wanted to make things clear. Bette Midler wrote, yes, Elon gave me back my blue check, but I didn't pay for it. Little Nas X tweeted, oh, on my soul, I didn't pay for Twitter blue. You will feel my wrath, Tesla man. <laughs> and Trixie Mattel wrote, I did not pay for Twitter blue, you effing pig. <laughs> Which, it's really something. How could you screw Twitter up this much? All they do is post little messages. There's nothing. It's like screwing up Ben and Jerry's. It's like if Ben and Jerry said, yeah, we have a good business, but these flavors are too liberal. What if we did a Heil Van Hitler? At least Twitter's still in business, for, well, for now, anyway. Bed Bath & Beyond yesterday announced their filing for bankruptcy. It, you know, if only they'd had 20% more revenue. <laughs> they, what, what was once a, you know, a pretty huge American retail store has transformed into, I don't know if you've been in one, into the saddest place to buy pillow shams on Earth. The company, though, says they're planning to stay open as they get their finances in order, but stores will close if they can't figure that out in time, which, and I don't mean to pile on, because I've had some real good times at Bed Bath & Beyond. Real good times. <laughs> Buying accent rugs, you know those shoe organizers you hang on the closet door? Really great stuff, but let's be honest, the store should have been called Bed Bath & That's It. <laughs> There's no beyond, there never was a beyond. Right, Guillermo? That's right, Jimmy. Thank you, you Guillermo. You I know a right. guy who could probably use one of those big blue 20% off coupons to cheer him up right now. And I, you probably know him too. We have some news from within our Fox family. Fox News Media and Tucker Carlson have mutually agreed to part ways. Tucker's last show was this past Friday. That's right, Fox News has severed bow ties with Tucker Carlson. After all these years, they are parting ways, uh, which means he was fired. I mean, that's really what parting ways means. He's was said to be stunned by the move. He reportedly was in the middle of renegotiating his contract. Someone released a photograph of Tucker's face the moment he found out he was being fired, and you can see he was <laughs> surprised, to say the least. Tucker couldn't be reached for comment. He's already on a plane to Moscow to meet with his manager. But what a shock. I mean, what an absolutely delightful shock this is. They say Rupert Murdoch made this decision himself. This is more like an episode of Succession than last night's episode of Succession. And that wasn't the only dramatic cable news beheading announced today. About a few minutes after the Fox announcement, this came out on CNN. I want to share with you some important news right here at our own network. CNN's Oliver Darcy is back with us. Oliver, what do you know? Uh, some shocking news again, John, in the world of cable news. Uh, Don Lemon and CNN have parted ways. Again, with the parted ways, Don Lemon and Tucker Carlson. I'm, for those of you who don't follow cable news, this is like if Ronald McDonald and the Burger King got fired on the same day. <laughs> Supposedly, neither network knew the other was doing this when... We have some breaking news. <laughs> After 20 years on the air, ABC TV has decided to part ways with its host, Jimmy Kimmel. This was a mutual decision. 
We want to say thank you to Jimmy Kimmel and his many, many contributions and wish him and endeavors him well in his future. And on personal note, I would like to say to Jimmy, don't let the door hit in your ass on the way out. <laughs> Loser, we will have more on this situation as it develops. This has been ABC News Special Report. Wow, that's, uh, well, that's, uh, I have to say, a hell of a way to find out. Could have been worse. I could have been traded to the Jets, you know? <laughs> but back to uh, Tucker. Even though he didn't know it, Friday was his last show, which means uh, this is what will be immortalized in cable news history as Tucker's final segment on Fox News, a guy showing up with a pizza he ordered. This is sausage. That's sausage. And uh, pineapple. pineapple. And really quick, as a pizza professional, do you look down on this order? Is this I do. I think that. I, I consider a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you did! <laughs> he ordered a sausage and pineapple pizza. He should have been fired on the spot for that alone. <laughs> but the best moment of his would turn out to be his final episode, Tucker saved for last. We'll be back. By the way, the entire episode of Let Them Eat Bugs, not quite as good as pizza, streaming now on Fox Nation. Use the promo code ORIGINALS for 30 days free. And we'll be back on Monday. In the meantime, have the best weekend with the ones that you love, and we'll see you then. No, you won't. We won't. Uh, we'll be eating bugs at home. He came in on a lion. He went out with one, too. The good news is now Tucker can spend more time at home tanning his testicles and touching himself to that sexy green M&M. Sadly, he's probably not done poisoning old people's brains. The question now is, where will he do it next? Will he go to OAN? Will he go to Newsmax? Will he crawl back up Satan's fiery beehole from whence he came? We don't know. But wherever he goes, we thought it right to celebrate his departure with a look back at where he went. So here now, to send him off in style, we give you one last dance with one of the most despicable mother tuckers ever to appear on American television. M&Ms will not be satisfied until every last cartoon character is deeply unappealing and totally androgynous. Half the viewers right now are like, what? That's testicle tanning? That's crazy. But my view is, OK, testosterone levels like crash, and nobody says anything about it. That's crazy. Dude, stop. Testicle tanning. Come on. Open, open your, time open your mind, Bobby. Worship me as I dress up like a woman, or I'll crush you. Your response when you see children wearing masks as they play should be no different from your response to seeing someone beat a kid in Walmart. It's enough to make you feel like you're going crazy after a while. Am I the only person who sees that all of this is total BS? Pandas, it turns out, could easily kill you if they felt like it. Thank God they don't. They're not against sex, either. They just hate unsexy zoos. Who are these chicken touchers out there that the CDC is concerned about? And we're not judging as we ask that. We just would like to know. They're rodents, but when you get close to them, they're incredibly cute. Why is the state against them? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and we're not overstating it. It's <laughs> 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 <This> absurd. <laughs> 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 That's it for us tonight. <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel is in for Sean. Really? Really? <laughs> That's a great line. All right, Tucker, great show. Thank you. Mm -hmm.